My first guest tonight is a two-time Academy Award-winning actress currently making her Broadway debut in the present. Please welcome Kate Blanchett. <laughs> Ovation. Oh, of course. Do you get that all the time? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to be. So do we. I was about to be humble, but I'm not going to. Um, it's lovely to see you. And you. Uh, listen, I've got a confession to make. I don't get Publicly. Star I don't get starstruck, but I do get a little Kate Blanchett struck <laughs> because I'm such a huge fan of yours. You're such a brilliant actress, and I'm not going to go into the whole Galadriel thing, but everything that you've done. And you're also an intelligent, lovely person, a fashion icon. What well, I is... can, but disappoint. What? No, no what... But you don't see me first thing in the morning. Believe it or not, I don't wake up like this. Oh, yes? <laughs> no? No, what, what are you like at home? Well, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty ugly at 6 a.m. I look like cross between Phyllis Diller and, um, I don't know, a teddy Galadriel. bear. Galadriel. Galadriel, yes. <laughs> no, no, it's, I mean, I'm covered in, I'm in my pajamas, which have, you know, I've been wearing for about, I, I wear my pajamas most of the time. You have actually. kids? Yeah, I have four. Okay. And so I'm covered in pancake mix and banana and Vegemite and That'll whatever take a else toll. is. Yeah. That'll take a toll. It's pretty bad. Could you explain Vegemite to me? <laughs> because I have, I've tasted it, I've tasted it in, uh, I've been into a show, but I've tasted it in New Zealand and it was shocking to me. That's just... because you, as an American, live on a diet of sugar. Even if you don't look, do we really want to go here? There's so much to, <laughs> there's sure. so much sure. to love about this magnificent Vegemite? country. Today, it but, tastes to me. Yes. It tastes to me like someone went. I wonder if we could find a way to make salt taste like it went bad and is brown. <laughs> It's got a very but that's because you spread it on like peanut butter. I mean, I'm, I've been Australians have been trying to explain this phenomenon for decades. I can't believe that. I mean, being a, a Peter Jackson fan, that you you haven't kind of crossed I that bridge. I tried it. I tried it. No, I tried it when we were down in New Zealand. But did Zealand. you put jam on it as well, or no? You know, are you supposed you, to? You, no, you just put a little tiny little weeny scrape and then put the rest on your pajamas. I could. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a tiny little uh, little scrape there, and I can still taste it. <laughs> ten years later, ten years later, my son, actually my youngest son, thought it was actually uh, like a jam, and took a giant bite of it. Well, that would do it for you. It was one of the saddest faces I've ever seen <laughs> in my entire life. Um, well, now you won uh, two Oscars, nominated for seven. Thank you for Can reminding. I... Whoa! Thank you. Why not? Why not? Why not? Uh, the reason I ask is that, you know, there was a huge hullabaloo at the Oscars this oh, past Sunday night. Oh, it wasn't night. that bad. <laughs> what did you, like, you, what's it, I've never been backstage, I've never been to the Oscars. Like, can you imagine what it must have been like for, for everyone up there? Like, absolutely so oh, shocking. I mean, awful. It's like sort of being married to the wrong person. It's, but, you know, it's, it, I, I first, for me, what was most upsetting is that, you know, in, in Australia, there's, um, uh, we have a wonderful, wonderful um, sort of cultural industries, but often success is not rewarded. But here in this country, the wonderful thing about America is success is rewarded. But now, I think in the last, since the inauguration, this notion of the cultural elite has really kind of got going. So anyone who has got... Um, a voice and success in the cultural industries is suddenly marginalised or considered, you know, their voice isn't significant or, or worth being part of the, you know, popular parlance. Right. And they kind of handed it to the administration on Sunday night, a well, bunch of duffers. Oh, you because know, you they know, look like idiots. Yeah, and, but they're and not. And he gets to point and go, Hollywood sad. Yeah, sad. <laughs> Which is such a profoundly interesting thing to say. Yeah. Hollywood sad. Hollywood sad. It's a bit like... Make me happy, not sad. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. what's the secret to winning an Oscar? As soon as they give it to you, just run off stage before they can give it to Moonlight? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but at least two films got to win. I mean, that's, that's the terrible... Nice. It, it, it's nice, nice. isn't yeah. it? It's really nice. It's twice the Oscars. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to do it next year. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, now, uh, you are on Broadway, your Broadway debut. I'm so surprised this is their Broadway debut because you've done so much theatre work in Australia. Well, my husband, Andrew and Upton, Upton and I ran the Sydney Theatre Company uh, for, well, he ran it for 10 years almost, and this is the culmination. This is the last play he programmed. It's at the uh, Ethel Barrymore Theatre here in that's New York. That's me. That's you, okay. And that's Richard. 
and that it's called the present. Now it's a Chekhov play. I am not familiar with the present. Well, no, it's because Chekhov wrote it for an actress who is obsessed with called Maria Yamalovla, and she rejected it. So he put it, wasn't it away. Wasn't good enough for the woman he had well, a crush on. Yeah, no, and so she, she, he, he put it as Richard says in his Tchaikovian sock drawer, and he was never found. It was a broken fragment of a work. And what people don't realize about Chekhov is it's funny. People, it's a comedy. Yeah. Well, I mean, Cherry Orchard, which is his most you know, well-known play, probably, is a comedy in four acts. And it's always played as, you know, for the misery. But it's, at, you know, it's, it's about people in a midlife crisis. And nothing could be more hilarious and absurd and tragic, <laughs> let's face it. Well, the, you're, you're not there yet, but... No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, I can't wait to get to my 40s. <laughs> now... Your character... Uh, <laughs> is you, turning 40. Is turning 40, yes. turning 40. Yes. Now, um, uh, you've said the play reminds you of things that are happening in the world right now. How, how so? Well, Andrew's updated it um, to the sort of 90s in Russia. Mm -hmm. So when Putin is coming to power, which yes. seems particularly relevant to <laughs> this, yeah. what's going on yes. in the country at the moment, yes. and with the rise of the oligarchs. So it's all about, um, as you move forward in life, wh what's your moral compass? What do you... You know, where does kindness and humanity sit in a really brutal world? Kate okay, Blanchett, what, what is your moral compass? Where does kindness and humanity sit in a brutal world? Because those are, those are important questions to ask right it's now. in my vagina. <laughs> <laughs> That takes, that takes care of my <laughs> next two questions. <laughs> Your character says that it's easier to do <laughs> that you don't actually care about. What does that mean? No, it's so hard to do what you really, really desperately want in life. It's so much easier just to do <laughs> you don't care either way about. Wow. What is, are there things that you... Aimed at the truth. <laughs> are there things that you, like, are be tempted to do because, you're like, oh, that looks like that would be fun to do, but, and I wouldn't, I don't care about it, and I would, I would like to do that. Um, what, like bungee jumping or something insane like that? No, it's like if you weren't being an actress, like, no, did thought, you have some I mean, other dream? No, I studied architecture for a while at university and I thought I'd go into gallery creation, curation and I don't know. I, I mean, I, people, someone said to me at high school, he said, you should find what you're passionate about. Yes. And then you should, you should sort of find a way to bring that into a profession. And I thought, what am I passionate about? And I went, I have a passionate hatred for plastic bags, but I couldn't quite bridge <laughs> how I could make a career out of that. I mean, other people have, you know, handicrafts, sure. you know. Yeah, or well, people, recycling. the guys in the orange vest on the highway with the stick with a nail on the end. <laughs> There's yeah, always, there. I can There's always go of, there. Yeah, community service. It's waiting yeah. for you out there. Mm. <laughs> now, um, your character has an existential crisis turning 40. How are the 40s treating you, young lady? I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm not there. Um, no, no, I'm, I'm liking it, actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I loved my 30s so much and I thought moving into my 40s was going to be a car crash but it no it was it's been good and I'm sort of it's been quite confronting actually because I'm starting to think about chickens and thinking about gardening and I'm thinking hang on that's what my grandmother and mother started um, so I'm moving into that zone you know gardening. I'm thinking about gardening Are you living in New York right now uh, yes very hard to start a garden in New York it is <laughs> Yes. So you're also doing Oceans 8, right? The, 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 the just all finished. You just finished it. Okay. Yes. Why, the, you know, sort of Oceans 11 was the first of the Ocean series. Why all female cast? Why is it only Oceans 8? Are there only... There's only eight women working in Hollywood. <laughs> 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 I'm glad you're one of them. Thank you so much for being here. The present is on Broadway at the Barrymore Theater, everybody. Kate Blanchett. We'll be right back with Paul Rust.